Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and just look at this laptop. It's the 2020 ASUS ROG Zephyrus Duo 15. A bit of a mouthful, but its standout feature, as you can see, well, literally stands out. Alongside either a 60Hz 4K or 300Hz 1080p main screen, we get a second 4K 14.1 inch IPS touchscreen, which flips up as you open the lid. It comes with a launcher for regularly used apps, and it's great for, you know, showing you emails, streaming, or even, which I found most helpful, having my Premiere Pro media browser down there. You can even look like you're working on the main screen while you're getting in a bit of cheeky gaming on the bottom one. And it's not just a pretty face. This thing is a beast when it comes to specs. I've got the highest end model here, which costs the best part of £4,000. But for that, you're getting, of course, this 4K60 screen, an RTX 2080 Super graphics card, uh, the i9, 10th Gen i9 with eight cores, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of SSD storage in RAID 0, a 90 watt hour battery, and of course, that second screen. So yeah, it's not cheap, but chances are this is gonna be your main productivity tool, or if you're buying that TTP 300 hertz version, then, you know, this is the gaming laptop. And of course, then you've got your room down here, maybe for your Twitch streaming, or, you know, your OBS software, if you're streaming yourself. It's your all-in-one package. If you are gonna use this, you know, at home or at the office as a workstation, wouldn't it just be easier to use a second screen or an external screen rather than having this one down here? Having said that, when I'm traveling and I'm, you know, editing videos on the go, as I mentioned, it's actually really useful to put all my media files down there so I can get a nice big Premiere Pro timeline on the top screen. So actually as a travel workstation, desktop replacement, well, quite honestly, there's nothing else like it. But of course, with that screen, you are definitely paying a premium over similarly specced 15 inch gaming or workstation machines. And it's not just the price that's a little hard to swallow, it's also pretty heavy. The trackpad's in an awkward position. Bizarrely, there's no webcam, which in today's kind of lockdown world is a bit frustrating. And also the fan noise can get pretty noticeable under load. Now you may remember last year I reviewed the dual screen ASUS ZenBook Duo and my first impression was that the second screen was a bit of an expensive gimmick. But what really surprised me, and even more so with this Zephyrus gaming version, is just how well it's been integrated and also how flexible it is. So let's talk about that screen and it's called the ROG ScreenPad Plus and it flips up 13 degrees which then makes it easier to see so you don't have to hunch over and look down like you did on last year's model. Personally, I'd be happy to see this at an even higher angle to obscure some of that chunky bezel under the main screen. So as an extension of the main screen, you can drag apps in and have them snap to fill the whole space, or have two or three side by side. Open the launcher and you can swap one display to the other, find and pin commonly used apps, and change settings. Now regardless of whether you go for the 4K or the 1080p version of the main screen, the screen pad will have a 3840 by 1100 resolution, which means this is basically an extra wide 4K screen. The aspect ratio makes it feel a little bit cramped at times, but it's still a lot more screen real estate than you get on something like the HP Omen X2S. It does take a minute to get used to because the main screen isn't touchscreen, but the screen pad is. As I say, there's really nothing else quite like this, and it is a unique experience. I do just wish either it was a little bit higher or this bezel was lower, so it just became this sort of seamless, curved experience. That would be nice, maybe on next year's model, but the whole thing can be a bit fiddly sometimes. Some programs and apps don't scale correctly, and you can see it juddering around whether it wants to snap to one side or go back up to the main screen. It works, but sometimes it does feel a bit buggy. But let's talk about this main screen, and as I say, you can either get a 4K60 or 1080p300 IPS display, and they both support G-Sync. And ASUS are pitching the Duo 15 as both a workstation type machine for creators, as well as a top tier gaming and streaming laptop. The matte 4K panel is brilliant. It gets pretty bright at about 400 nits, and it's color accurate. I measured 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, and 90% DCI-P3, so I can comfortably edit my photos and videos on this. Of course, if gaming is your focus, then you'll want the 300Hz Full HD version, as this 60Hz display seriously limits the gaming experience. And also annoyingly, neither screen supports HDR. As for the design, overall I think it's a stunning looking laptop. We've got this aluminium magnesium chassis, and I think given the fact that we have this unique keyboard layout, the second screen, while it's a little bit heavy, it's actually reasonably compact overall. And most importantly, the build quality is great. The lower screen pops up on two legs and is surprisingly rigid, and the screen's hinge minimizes screen wobble. 
It is reasonably slim at just 21 millimeters and it weighs 2.4 kilograms or 5.3 pounds. As for ports, we get a single USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3, three USB 3.2 Type-A's, one Gen 2 and two Gen 1's, separate mic and headphone jacks, as well as Ethernet and HDMI 2.0 on the back. I do miss having an SD card reader though, and it would have been nice to have a second Thunderbolt 3. Now thanks in part to the Max-Q GPU we have in here rather than a full fat graphics card, and also ASUS's cooling setup, even under high loads, the laptop never got too hot to touch, although things did get a little warm underneath. ASUS say the gap under the screen actually increases the airflow by 30%. I had hoped this might make the fans quieter, but they can still be quite noisy, especially when rendering or gaming. Now as you can see, the keyboard and the trackpad are both offset, and it does feel a little cramped to use. And also being lower down, we lose the palm rest. Having said that, typing feels good thanks to the 1.4mm of key travel, and we also get per-key RGB lighting controlled by Aura Sync. The bigger problem though is the touchpad position, as when I'm typing I found my hand would just graze it and register a movement or click, and suddenly I'd be typing somewhere else on the page. The pad itself works nicely though, and we do get physical click buttons, plus you can toggle it to become a numpad which is helpful. Now let's talk about performance, and while it will vary based on what model of the laptop you go for of course, with this top spec one as you can imagine, with a 2080 Super Max Q, it's pretty quick. In Call of Duty, I'm getting about 55 FPS with high settings at 4K. But really, if you are gaming, you'll have gone for the 1080p 300Hz model. So dropping it to Full HD, I'm getting 145 FPS. Now I'm not sure why you'd play Fortnite on a 4 grand laptop, but if you did, again at 1080p with epic settings, you'd average around 140 FPS. I got 98 frames per second in Death Stranding, again using very high settings, and about 66 at 4K. In Rainbow Six Siege, at ultra settings, I hit 114 FPS at 4K and a whopping 225 at 1080p, which is almost, almost taking full advantage of that 300Hz option. And that's an interesting point, because even if you do go for the top spec version of this with the 300Hz option, unless you're getting 300 FPS in your games, you're not really taking full advantage of it. And even with the 2080 Super, I think partially because it's the Max-Q variant, which is a bit underclocked, we're not really getting that close to 300, usually about half that. Now, of course, if you play older games or drop the settings, you'll boost your FPS, but just bear that in mind that just because it's 300Hz doesn't mean you're going to get that if you're playing games. And as you'd expect, this thing just flies through Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and the fact that we do have an RTX graphics card means we get the uh, more recent NVENC encoder. I did a whole video about uh, the benefits of RTX, so you can check that out afterwards if you want to get super nerdy for a minute. But yeah, this is the ultimate workstation for me, and for some people, probably the ultimate gaming laptop. One thing I was worried about coming into this was the battery life. In my video test, I got about five and a half hours of full screen YouTube at 50% brightness, and about six hours in my light user browser and video test. So kind of average results, but not bad at all given the power on tap and the two screens. So then, the big question, should you buy the ROG Zephyrus Duo 15? Well, to be honest, the price alone really limits the audience of this thing. This is a high-end premium gaming laptop slash workstation. So for most of you, including myself, because I have to give this back, probably not, because it all comes down to how you use it, but there are better workstations slash video editing laptops, and also better gaming laptops for less money. You do, of course, pay a premium uh, for this second screen and the novelty of it, but, you know, hats off to ASUS. They are trying different things, they are innovating, and they are doing it really well, assuming you have very, very deep pockets. Personally, I think the Duo makes more sense as a mobile workstation than it does for gaming, as having the extra apps open at the same time was genuinely useful when I was editing video. If you are a hardcore gamer though, then I think the £3,000 2070 Max-Q i7 version with the 300Hz screen is a better choice. And also, you may notice if you do look below that I'm getting close to that 1 million subscriber mark, so if you haven't already subscribed and you're not sick of my face and voice just yet, then it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button below and maybe also ding that notification bell so you're the first to see my next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.